the owners to win and uh, she came out. Yeah, what I'm really looking here on, on, on the restart is, is is what the the two and the six can do to, to influence the front row. You know, it's a pretty big long run up and I'm sure it's probably wide open through one and two, so what that what that push is like you're gonna get is, is gonna be pretty important to, to which one of these leaders gets up front. Right bracing teammates side by side on the second row. Thank goodness Nick Sanchez has that big orange number. Help us distinguish the difference. As green flag is back in the air, Corey Heim leads up. What a great restart by Green Dollar. I said Corey Heim leads it. That was a great jump, as you noted, by the 18 at Drew Dollar. I think he's found his... Here comes Corey Heim right back on the outside. Grab some quarter panel and keep it really tight. Um, he's really going to hang right in there. Yeah. yeah. What a great battle here. See who's going to look first in turn three. Still side by side. Corey's got the air right off of his door. Going to get a good run off the top. Mike clear and finally gets him off turn four. It's a good drop by Drew hanging in there on that restart. He still should be close and have a chance. Corey Heim officially retains the lead there and Drew Dollar second. Sanchez. Carew's holding the fourth. I talked to him after practice and he was so down on himself, you know, it, 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 Tina Gustine, he has that damage on the right front. He's got yep. some on the right rear now to match that. Oh, and some came off the car. Yeah, some debris fell off the right rear of that 15 machine. It's like the teammates the front end right damage. That's a good bit of front end nose damage. With the six and the two. They'll show it. On Looks the like 15. Has a little more speed right now than Nick does. Yeah, he's been around that high side just, just like what I was talking about. He was he was able to get a really big one off of one or two. And, and he tried to half cover it and didn't quite make up the speed. And they blocked each other all the way down the straightaway. It's, it's tough to all try to throw to the teammates. But now he learned something from his teammate. Oh, he looked for him. Woo! Looking for him. Probably because it was his teammate. <laughs> right action. Hey, what Zach Nick Sanchez was telling me about Raja, that he's very Series. They're on a five-minute clock. They could take fuel and tires, but not simultaneously. They can make those adjustments, track bar wedge, air pressure. Only four men over the wall, or four crewmen over the wall. And they will, yeah, and they will retain their positions. The positions they came in on the pit road is how they will restart this race. Yeah, people saw maybe the truck race or cup race at the, the Bristol Dirt Race. Exactly. They did the exact same yeah. thing. Yeah. Hey, well, you could see there the number 20 is looking Back out on track. That was 
left tires first. They want to take a pound out of those left rear and then the rest of the tires plus fuel for that number 20. And of course, they're now saying that it's actually pretty comfortable. The 18 car, they're going to free it up for this long run. He said, Drew says I can run at the top. That car was bottoming out though. He thinks it's a skirt on the left side. So that is something that they're working on their 18. And then number two, a big Sanchez. He says he needs a little bit more rear grip and definitely a whole lot of water. It's out. It's very hot out there. He's saying adjust that rear air pressure and track bar to get fuel back like it was feeling in practice. So Nick is... I just love going to Charlotte Motor Speedway, but what a diverse schedule. We've got a couple dirt tracks, road course, mid-Ohio, and uh, this has always been a very diverse schedule, and this is some place that these guys can get, and girls can get, a lot of good experience on all sorts of racetracks. We, we, you wouldn't Issues and now mistakes in the race today. Remember, he was battling for the lead at Talladega, and that caution flag basically ended, ended the race. He was trying to take the lead. Actually, he technically was leading at that time. Got together with the car on the inside. But uh, they have a fast car, as, as Austin said. He's going to need a couple caution flags to get back into this. That's got to be a sickening feeling, knowing the field is coming back to green. Green flag is in the air. Pretty good push here for the last one car. See if he might want to take it. Maybe not. Stay too wide. Nick wants to take it, though. He's peeking out. Side by side again, going through the corner. Really great battle. Great race on both ends. Remember, new tires on these cars right here. I love that shot. You see all the yellow bumpers. That means I'm a rookie coming through. The last 24 races in the Arkham Menard series, as we see a great side by side battle through, but just a bit of an advantage. Not for long. The last 24 races. There they go. Frustration on the radio as the caution waves for the third time today. And that, and that's the tough part. They were racing really hard for for the lead. You know, corner was right on the door of the 18 car, and we got a lot of laps left in the race. But um, you know, as you see, who slipped first there, and obviously contact just ran out of racetrack, come out the corner. Yeah, a lot of damage on Corey's car for sure. I don't see that much damage from this side looking at our broadcast position look at the, uh, the car's killed there's right front damage to the 20 as well as obviously you can see all the rear damage the deck lid dragging along but behind the car that one's gonna hurt the 20 what a great race car i mean he was the dominant car today but we also knew that the 18 was right there with them and now the two best cars today wrecked so like that the side draft here and Corey's just taking knock the wind so knock the wind team. right off got a little yep. loose there's a bit of a gap but and that's the thing new tires talking about freeing up the race car we've got new tires the track's been changing you get to first first try to get back out there and obviously the 18 was just a little too free and um wasn't any room listen to the throttle listen to the throttle here mm -hmm. wow i don't think there's a lot of damage to the 18 car he got into the 20 pushed the 20 into the wall Nick says thank you. Yeah. Race a sweet move right there. Heads up by Nick Sanchez was able to split the difference, go right between the middle. Just so vulnerable when you're on the inside here. Pull up the loose right there. He's already right. Been lost it already. Just Damn. chasing up the racetrack and finally runs out of room, runs into Corey Heim. Yeah, in Corey's defense, I would say he entered this corner entered the corner of his door and there was there was a decent amount they of fix the deck lead on eighteen too. Cars. See it bust up a little bit. Tough racing, close racing gone bad and um, obviously a little bit of a loose moment for the eighteen on stickers. But each team doesn't feel the same way you do. Absolutely not. <laughs> Both Toyotas out. There's, out there's right. two polar opposite opinions on what happened. That's it. Car is done. Corey Himes day is over. Did you, from your point of view, I know you said you haven't seen it yet, but from your point of view in the car, what'd you see? Uh, I gave him plenty of room. I thought, you know, in one and two, we were side after each other pretty hard, but I, I raced her with a lot of respect and just a close friend of mine. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just looks like he lost it and it's just part of it. So yeah, I don't think he did it on purpose. I mean, he's trying to go for the win. It is what it is. It's a resetting day for Corey Himes. He has to get in the truck race here later today. Yes, yeah, good point there. And, and he mentioned it, they're good friends. I mean, that's got to be the tough part of being friends with your competitors. Absolutely. And I think I think the one thing from that camera angle, too, you saw when, when Drew got, had a big wheel, Corey actually moved up the racetrack, saw it coming, did give him space. So um, just a tough race in DR. I mean, that's, they are racing each other. Which is Roger Carew. See how hard these guys decide to race each other. It's like I said, it's, it's been fun to watch them today. Kind of run off of each other. Side 
looks like Gus Dean is really jockeying for position back there. Sanchez just heard the best word possible. Clear, take it. These drivers are going to some ground right here. They had 45 minutes on the track earlier today. So you have two teammates like Raja and Nick. They get along so well. They share data. The cars are so identical when they unload at the racetrack. And they can bounce ideas off each other. And it shows each time out now. These two are running together. I was talking to some of the guys down in the garage here, and they're actually getting some help from Chevrolet over this team. And the drivers are getting some time in the simulator, so that's certainly helping them. And it's no secret why these two guys are running, running well. They're getting some help from Chevrolet, spent some time in the simulator, and had great race teams. And, and that's when you can go try things. You know, I, I've talked about it today already. You know, Roger has been able to, to move around different lanes and, and, and learn how to run up high. And, make passes and make speed while doing it and you can do that on the simulator without you know you can push the reset button and put it in the wall <laughs> there's, there's no issues with that so you can actually get a good feel to lay the land and you know how the cameras and the track change because when we say it's progressive banking it is it's not a smooth transition and each one of those lanes is a little bit different three dollars about three quarters of a lap behind also a lap down his lap times are way way off so obviously more damage to that car than the peter yeah, it was unfortunate. Kind of compound fracture on that day. Um, just uh, a lot of damage and uh, probably didn't get a, a tire fully clear on, on, on that last stop. And um, So Drew Dollar officially out, Corey Heim as well. Let's drop back to the 10th place. Car. Sounds as well again. Nick Sanchez leads him to the green flag with his team. One of them ain't starting. Four ain't starting. I have a caution here for a styled car. On the racetrack. Well, they can get refired up while it's rolling. I'm going to stop them. Some needs to nose ahead by the time they're going to turn three. Some of it's about timing as the driver. Sometimes they'll be more left to make sure you can push up in that position. Nick's, Nick's got that spot again. His magic word's clear. Roger's going straight to the top. I'll be interested to see how quickly he can make time to Dean pulls up the side of Raja right now. It's maybe a little too early. It's a great opportunity for Nick to get away and Dustin really challenge for, for a front row. Front row restart here. Yeah, Gus Dean had that damage earlier, ran over a piece of debris, destroyed the right front, got into the wall as well. They fixed him up. He's up there battling for second. Yeah, Raja used that momentum off the high side to score back out in front of the 15 of Gus Dean. Now Gus Dean goes to the high side. Roger told me this morning he couldn't wait to go high. He's one of those drivers that just can't wait to clean the track off first. He's just comfortable running so close to the wall. While well, we talk about Gustine in the 50, let's get to know him a little bit. Been around for a little bit. Born in 1994, Bluffton, South Carolina. Two career ARCA wins. And one of those came at Talladega. Mud trucks, car restoration, and hunting. He's got his hot music. Yeah, they were, I, I don't know how many thousand horsepower that mud truck has. It's incredible. Sounds like fun. And he's actually getting married this year. I like to do restoration on cars. And their first date, guess where it was? Take hey, a welcome. Racetrack. Charlotte Motor Speedway. Austin, don't do that. It's the vacation spot everybody, everybody <laughs> wanted to say earlier, okay? Everyone wants a racetrack. We did a good job on repairing that car. Stay to the racetrack. Don't have a first move. At a racetrack. Not my first move. The 43, Daniel Dye, you guys thought now that he's on the lead. So impressive. He's got momentum on his side. Can Nick Sanchez hang on and take his second win? And I hate that I did that for the guys. Obviously, it's a car capable of winning and you know, mess it up. But good that that happened with Corey. Um, obviously, I have a lot of respect for him. I'll, I'll talk to him, apologize. Uh, tell him a lot of respect for him. And, and he, he's a good race car driver, so I feel bad about that. It's a learning curve for Drew Dollar, as is everybody here in the Arkham Series. Thanks, Kate. We could hear it in his voice there. He feels so bad. He made a mistake, he said, and he has nothing but respect for Corey Heim and his friend and fellow competitor. Yeah, Corey's interview was much the same. He, he, he knew there was nothing intentional there. Just, you see, Drew got a little bit loose there and unfortunately got into Corey. Uh, enough speed there, lost a little bit more ground. You see, now he's falling over a second behind. Yeah, Nick's really turned up the wick here. You oh, probably didn't even know. Only five laps to go. I know, right? Five laps to go. Seven cars on the 
before that last caution came out. He got this opportunity because Scott Melton was involved in that huge wreck at Talladega. Compound fracture to his left leg. Couldn't race and called up well and said, I want you to race my car. They were their team had a great relationship. And here he is, and he was just ecstatic. Drove the bus or cuffed himself, brought the race car here. Three flat tires on the way here <laughs> that he had to change. We'll, back, we'll be back in the car in Charlotte as well. But hey, thank you, Scott. We really appreciate you. Get well soon. We hope to see you back soon. Absolutely. Yes, as Nick Sanchez continues his march. Pretty good string of left traffic here. So uh, this might be an opportunity. Absolutely, it's an opportunity for Roger. He's going to close up that gap. He, he knows that if he's going to have a chance, he's got to be within a few cars to go to the house. Sanchez, Carew, Dye, Dean, and Mosak, top five. So there you go, you got the 69 running, running in the top lane, takes the arrow, and this should swing it down this lap. Five cars in the lead lap. Alex Sanchez got his first career win here in the fall. White flag. White flag is in the air, one lap to go. Nick Sanchez, that momentum, we knew it was going to be a big weekend for him. He won at Talladega. He has gotten better every single time. Nick Sanchez, 20 years old from Miami, Florida. He wins it at Kansas. That's why I didn't say a word about it until we checked the flag. Won three of the last five races. That's some great momentum for him. Mm -hmm. to him and that whole team, a one-two finish, really shows what they're bringing to the table. And having, having some manufacturer support behind the, these, these two young drivers, it's, uh, it's fun to see, and it's what makes our Menard Series you know, even stronger when, you, when you've got... I mean, you've got that kind of backing and being able to show up to the racetrack prepared and really execute on it and try and carry it. You know, they've both got opportunities to run in the Xfinity Series now and get their, get their feet wet. And um, I guess it sounds like Nick wants to get his feet wet after this because it's really hot right now, but he needs some ice. Yeah. He's ready to do a burnout. Hats off to Max Siegel. You see his name there, believing in these drivers, building this team, Red Racing. Nick Sanchez had only led three career laps entering today. Two laps in this race. Mm -hmm. Nice comeback by Daniel Dye also to come from two laps down with penalties to finish third. This is becoming his moment. Stop it at the finish line. Uh, yeah, we lucked out with what happened right there with 18 and the 20. I feel like we.